Thanks for tuning in to our special edition of Pursuing Our Purpose Through Punk. So today, we're going to take a look at the intriguing history of punk music. But then, we're going to see how it unexpectedly evolved into Christian punk and later into Christian pop punk. So let's jump right into it. The rise of punk rock in the mid-1970s challenged musical traditions and injected new blood into the music industry. This revolution was driven by legendary bands like the Ramones. Even though there was plenty of other bands at the time, the Ramones are best known for being leaders of bringing punk into the mainstream when they released their self-titled debut album in 1976. With their short, fast, and stripped-down songs, they established what has become known as the punk sound. When they weren't raising anarchy in the UK, the Sex Pistols also added a unique twist that would forever change the sound of punk. Their landmark punk record and the only full-length album they ever released, never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols in 1977, showed that they could break the rules, as if punk had any rules, and show that they can make punk their own. Then you have bands like The Clash, who pushed boundaries by merging different genres, like reggae and rockabilly, like how they did on the 1979 London Calling record. These politically charged choruses sung by The Clash contain socially conscious lyrics that prove that punk is not just about protest, but also about social transformation. These pioneering punk bands created the sound and launched a worldwide movement that influenced the future generation of punk rockers, including myself. Speaking of that, check out my Spotify playlist. It's called Christian Pop Punk History. It includes all the artists mentioned in this video and more, and it features my debut single, We Are Done. This song has a lot of raw emotion and authenticity, and it tackles issues of betrayal and disillusionment in relationships. Go ahead and check out the playlist and let me know what you think in the comments. Punk music encouraged artists to DIY, do it yourself. They challenged the norms. They built cult followings as a symbol of rebellion and freedom. Throughout the years, bands like the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, and others have influenced generations of punk rockers who would push the boundaries and push the scene into new and unexpected places. So that brings us to the birth of Christian punk rock. Now, some wonder, how could these two even come together? But let's take a look. In the 1980s, punk was now used by Christians and bands like Undercover were leading that movement. Debuting in 1982, Undercover was known for a straight up punk rock sound with a strong biblical message. When they came on the scene, they proved that punk, rebellion, and faith can equally coexist. Undercover boldly challenged the stereotypes about what it means to be a Christian and a punk rock musician. With albums like Branded and God Rules, Undercover inspired the new generation of punk musicians to openly embrace their faith. Another notable punk band was Alter Boys. With albums like Gut Level Music, Alter Boys demonstrated that punk's raw energy could be a conduit for a powerful Christian message. When Gut Level Music came out in 1984, they showed that you could still have that same punk energy while embracing your relationship with Jesus Christ. They gained a lot of notoriety for their stage presence, and they were good not just good for Christian music, but good for punk music in general. All right, there's a difference. So now this brings us to how Christian punk transformed into Christian pop punk. So Christian pop punk emerged in the 1990s as a subgenre that mixed catchy faith-based hooks with high levels of energy. This started a new era in punk rock. Tooth & Nail Records came on the scene in the early 1990s, and they signed a whole bunch of Christian punk bands. One of the most notable ones is 90 Pound Wuss. Their 1995 self-titled debut album was a combination of pop punk and hardcore punk. And the lyrics proudly expressed their faith in Jesus while staying true to the punk aesthetic. Life in General by MXPX and The Anatomy of the Tongue in Cheek by Reliant K are two classic albums that set new standards for Christian pop punk. When MXPX released Life in General through Tooth & Nail Records, this album became known for maintaining a biblical worldview while still maintaining that breakneck speed that became so popular at their punk rock shows, that is, R-A-W-K shows. They defined the genre and raised the standards for what Christian pop punk was supposed to sound like with their popular songs like Chick Magnet. Although it had its run in the 90s, Christian pop punk really took off in the early 2000s. The Anatomy of the Tongue-in-Cheek by Reliant K, which debuted in 2001, 
had the perfect balance of witty, introspective lyrics and upbeat music. Their one-of-a-kind comedic personality and pop-punk style made songs like Sadie Hawkins' Dance popular among both Christians and the mainstream. I used to work at this summer camp and they used to play that song every single day. It was crazy. MXPX and Reliant K were followed by other bands who have contributed to push the boundaries of what is considered typical within the scene. In their 2002 album, Say It Loud, Sanctus Real, which is one of my favorite bands of all time, blended punk and pop rock effortlessly with heartfelt lyrics. You can hear their wide artistic influences through all their early records. Before their major label debut, you can definitely hear that pop punk sound on their demo album, All This Talk of Aliens. Then you have bands like Stellar Cart, whose first album All Gas No Break in 2005 has that MXPX-like excitement, but with more overtly Christian themes. Another critical band during this era, Hawk Nelson, kept up this trend on their Letters to the President album in 2004, where they wedded catchy hooks to a Christ-centered theme. Hits like Live Life Loud brought a dynamic pop-punk flavor, and their song California became a Christian pop-punk anthem. Another one from this time period was Eleven Sevens and The Land of Fake Believe in 2006, where they skillfully blended electronic music into their new fun approach to pop punk. With albums like Critically Ashamed in 2006, FM Static, which was a side project from one of the members of Thousand Foot Crutch, effortlessly blended pop punk and electronic elements, diversifying Christian pop punk even further. The duo's creative lyrics and catchy hooks won many fans over and helped to cement the credibility of the genre. Run Kid Run, who debuted in 2006 with This Is Who We Are, blended punk and melodic elements and brought a fresh dynamic to Christian pop punk. Never Take Friendship Personal in 2005 helped Amberlynn become known for their unique alternative rock sound. Fireflight, an alternative rock band, added a distinctive twist to Christian rock because you can hear some punk influences in there. These bands, along with MXPX, and Reliant K, helped Christian pop punk evolve and remain relevant in the music world. Their influence on the scene lives on through the legacy gifted to us through their catchy choruses and solid Christ-centered message. So that was a pretty good history of Christian pop punk. But let's take a closer look into how things are going now. Christian punk continued to evolve throughout the 2010s and beyond, with newer bands pushing the genre's limits. The ongoing concepts genre-bending style shaped Christian punk even further. Their album Saloon in 2013 and Handmade in 2015 smoothly tiptoed between punk and metal. The ongoing concept's unconventional sound shows that Christian punk can't be put in a box. Wolves at the Gate, a post-hardcore band, shows how they combine post-hardcore energy with emotional lyricism. Wolves at the Gate's incorporation of heavier elements adds a layer of complexity to Christian punk attracting listeners who appreciate a more aggressive approach. Contemporary Christian pop-punk bands have a wider impact than just music. They represent a genre that has evolved throughout time. The ongoing concept, Wolves at the Gate, Stellar Cart, and Eleven E Seven show that Christian punk respects variety and allows artists to explore a range of influences while staying true to their faith-driven message. Christian punk shows its continuing popularity an ability to relate to audiences across genres. These bands enrich punk's musical diversity and cultural relevance by showing that faith and punk can equally and happily coexist in new and exciting ways. As Christian punk continues to evolve, these artists remain vital components of this dynamic movement. All right, thanks for joining me on this exploration of the roots of Christian punk and pop punk. Share your thoughts and your favorite Christian punk bands in the comments below. Until next time, this concludes today's episode of Pursuing Our Purpose Through Punk.